Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for joining me today for another skincare vlog. If you don't know who I am, my name is Brandon. I am a medical writer. I write in the form of continuing medical education as well as medical news publications. I've written quite a bit in the field of dermatology and dermatology research. And I try to bring that into these vlogs to talk about skincare research, anti-aging, things like that. So if you feel like you are interested in those topics, which if you're at this video, I'm sure you are, definitely hit that like button down below. It really helps my videos a lot. Stick around to hit that subscribe button. I'd love to have you here. But today I'm going to be talking about a sunscreen, a Korean sunscreen that I loved, but was surrounded by controversy in the past year, year and a half. Something that I touched upon in one of my vlogs, and that is the Purito SPF 50 PA4 Plus sunscreen, Centella Asiatica green level sunscreen, which isn't the way it's marketed these days. Yeah, so Purito, they came out with this newly formulated sunscreen and I'll kind of just give you the short background. You can go ahead and you can also watch the video that I have on my video about the controversy. But basically Purito is a Korean skincare brand they had a sunscreen called the Centella Green Level Unscented Sun SPF 50, and it was a sunscreen that everybody really loved, adored. I loved it so much. I loved the formula. It was light, it was moisturizing. There was virtually no cast, which I loved. The downside of it is that that sunscreen that Purito used to sell, it only contained two chemical filters and at very low concentrations too. And independent lab tests in Europe, as well as one in Korea, the independent lab tests, two of them were coordinated by a company called, or a website called Inside Coder, Inside Coder. And they found at least when they sent the sunscreen to independent labs to test the SPF, they found the SPF wasn't actually as high as 50. In fact, it was as low as 15 to 19 and there was a huge uproar uproar on the internet a lot of people were disowning purito they were calling them out purito came out with a statement on their instagram t talking and touching upon the controversy and they also pulled their line that that sunscreen that centella asiatica green level sunscreen they pulled it from their website from all the places like stylevana yes style they really just stopped selling it all together so they could take a step back, reformulate it, add some other chemical filters as well as a mineral filter. I'll get into the ingredients of the newly formulated product in just a second. But yeah, there was another independent lab test in Korea conducted at the end of 2020. That test found that the SPF of that sunscreen, the original Purito sunscreen, green level, was about 28, 29 you know, roughly SPF of 30, which is actually still pretty good. I mean, for a face, a daily face sunscreen. You know, I'm not going to defend the alleged potentially deceptive marketing practices that people were saying Purito was engaged in. I'm not gonna say that they, that's what they were doing or that's what was happening. But I do wanna say that in terms of independent labs, Labs that test SPFs, first of all, SPF really only tells you about the the ability of the the product to protect against UVB or the burning rays, not necessarily the UVA. PA, the PA rating system is better at that. And that sunscreen, as well as a new Purito sunscreen, tells you that it's a P PA of four plus. I'm really not sure if those independent lab tests really measured that UVA, which is kind of a high priority for me, as well as for a lot of people in Asia too, I think that's sort of the culture over there is use sunscreen for the anti-aging benefits and for the sun protection. So yeah, there is kind of a wide variance among different lab testing centers in terms of how they measure SPF and how they quantify it. So the fact that there was an SPF of 15, an SPF of 19, and then one of 28.4 or whatever it was, uh, really tells you that there is quite a bit of variation how products are tested in terms of measuring their SPF. So to really vilify that original formulation can be kind of hard to do conclusively because you really don't know the exact SPF of the product. Now, I'm pretty sure that it was probably under 50, so it definitely wasn't what it was marketed. So that's kind of really why people were upset. and. You know, rightfully so, you want to make sure that you are protecting yourself from UVA, from UVB, that you're protecting yourself from the aging, burning rays of the sun. I definitely understand that. But something else that I think, you know, for example, Dr. Dre touched upon in one of her videos is that in really these types of sunscreens, these facial sunscreens, they aren't being used, especially like in Asia, they're not being used for laying out by the beach or laying by the pool. They're not being used for doing yard work all day out in the hot, hot sun. They're used as daily sunscreens that you wear 
uh, just every single day. You put on in the morning, you reapply during the day where you're really just sitting inside all day. Personally, I'm okay with an SPF of 15 if I'm going to be inside and I know I'm going to be sort of in a windowless room, like that windowless room back there, pretty much all day. And I'm gonna have just sort of intermittent, very little sun exposure to the windows. I know it's not extremely healthy, but that's just sort of how my life is structured at the moment. Yeah, I'm okay with SPF 15 because SPF 15, it covers what I think approximately 93% of the UV spectrum or at least the UVB. So, you know, I'm definitely okay with an SPF of 15. Again, it is the, the label that sort of trips me up. You know, you want to make sure that you have the, the actual SPF that's on the label, as well as the actual PA rating that's on the label. But that being said, an SPF of 15, I think, is pretty sufficient for most people if you are not, if you're pretty much inside all day and you're not having an, maybe you're not in a career where you're having to be outside all, all day, you might need to reach for a purely mineral zinc oxide, titanium dioxide, or sunscreen or Olympia sunscreen that contains a wider variety of chemical filters. But I think that this newly formulated sunscreen by Purito maybe fits the bill. It's gonna maybe, I think that more than likely someone's going to have independent tests done on this sunscreen as well. So I'm almost, well, I'm not, I'm almost certain that Purito has done their due diligence in formulating this and testing it to a degree where they are comfortable with coming out because they don't want to go through that controversy again, I'm assuming. And because any company, any company that's geared toward providing consumer goods wants to make sure that they have a good image, that they're reliable, that they're reputable. And I think that Purito really has done their due diligence with this sunscreen. So let's just go ahead and look at the product side by side. So this one was the original sunscreen, the Centella Green Level sunscreen. It came in this packaging, very simple packaging. I really like the box. I really liked the bottle that it came in too. I really like the look of it. And the I think I still have a little bit left in here, quite a bit actually. Um, I, have, I have tons of sunscreen that I go through, so there's still quite a bit in here um, in the old formulation. I'll have to use it up. And then comes the new packaging, the new, newly formulated sunscreen that they're selling in place of the, the one I just showed you. This is the daily, I think it's called the daily go-to sunscreen. Um, so they kind of re, not only provided different packaging, but they also sort of renamed it. So they named it the daily go-to sunscreen broad spectrum SPF 50 plus PA4 plus. So the reason why I have higher confidence in this is because this sunscreen contains four, four different uh, UV filters with UVA and UV2, or sorry, UVA and UVB. I was thinking UVA1, UVA2, but it definitely covers UVA1, UVA2, as well as UVB with those four filters. That sort of gives you a broader, broader spectrum of coverage against the UV, against all the UV that reaches the Earth's surface, and that reaches your skin. This sun, this packaging, by the way, is very, you know, earthy. I really like the colors. It's very simple. And what I like too is that there's more text and instructions and descriptions on the back in English because I don't really, I don't understand Korean. I don't read it. I don't speak it. So that's really helpful for me. They're definitely marketing this toward both the, uh, the West as well as um, obviously consumers in Korea. Oh, wow. This is actually biodegradable packaging. That's kind of cool. So I'm really... I wonder if the other one is biodegradable packaging as well. I don't know. It doesn't say if it did, if it if it was, it was probably written in Korean. I didn't understand if it stand this, but yeah, this is also biodegradable packaging. That's kind of neat. I really like that. And when you take it out of the bottle or when you take it out of the box, this is the packaging. So it's similar in terms of the, you know, the gold and the black lettering and it has a white, it's in a white bottle. I'm wondering if, so the original was two ounces, 60 milliliters, and the new one is also 60 milliliters, but 2.02 ounces. So they kind of just upped it a little bit. But yeah, I'm really liking the, I really do like the new packaging, but that's really not why you buy sunscreen, right? Is the packaging, you buy it because you want the protection it affords against UVA and UVA2. Particularly for me, I prefer, I look at the PA rating system. I want to make sure that it's a four, a three or a four because the three and the four is gonna provide you high or extreme levels of protection against UVA, both UVA1 and UVA2. And those are the aging rays that are primarily responsible for the visible signs of aging. Keep in mind though that UVB also contributes to the aging process, contributes to, to a certain degree, the degradation of collagen and elastin in the skin. UVA is definitely gonna be more powerful, but UVB, you know, also look at the SPF. I think that more sunscreen manufacturers are putting both SPF and PA ratings, even ones in America. I think like Color Science, for instance, puts the PA rating system 
on their sunscreens. So I think that's both of those are really, really helpful. Um, if you are approaching sunscreen from an anti-aging sort of perspective. Okay, like, okay, like, okay, like I mentioned before, the sunscreen, um, the new Purito Daily Go-To sunscreen contains four chemical filters. The first filter it contains is Tenosorb S. Tenosorb S is a chemical filter. It's not approved in the United States as far as I'm aware, but it is approved over in Asia. And this is a, a phenomenal UVA and UVB filter. So it kind of duels and teams up together to protect against the aging rays as well as the burning rays, but also aging rays. Like I said previously, UVB also contributes to aging to a certain extent. Um, but yeah, Tenosorb S is phenomenal. I'm not sure, I can't remember, I think the original had, I'm not sure, did it have Tenosorb S? I, I know it only had two. I think it was like Uvinol and Tenosorb. Um, let me know if I'm wrong. I, I'll put the original in the description box so I can find it. But yeah, so Tenosorb S, phenomenal dual broad spectrum chemical filter that is safe, tolerable. Uh, speaking of which, all of these chemicals that I'm about to mention, US sunscreens like Octocrylin, Octo Oct Octoxinate, ugh, can't even say it. Um, they make my eyes tear up so bad. They and they also like trigger like nasal like stuff. Like I, it's like I have allergic reaction to octocrylin in particular. But the Korean sun, the Korean sunscreen agents or filters, the European filters too. I don't have any reaction to those. My eyes don't water. They don't get red. They don't get irritated. They don't. I don't go crazy. Like I, I'm telling you, with U.S. filters, chemical filters. I cannot function for six hours at least. And that's even after I've washed off my face because it gets in my eyes, it's awful. So these filters from Korea do wonders for me. I love it. Okay, so it also has U uh, Uvenol T150. Uvenol T150 is a UVB filter. Okay, so it also has titanium dioxide. Now titanium dioxide is technically a, I guess you could call it a broad spectrum filter. Uh, it's a mineral filter, so you'll find it in mineral sunscreens. I'm not a fan of mineral sunscreens that only contain titanium dioxide and not zinc oxide, because even though titanium dioxide protects against UVB as well as UVA, it only protects against one form of UVA. I think it's UVA2. There's also UVA1, and that's what zinc oxide is really great at protecting against. But if you only have titanium dioxide, you're not really getting the full coverage, the, the, the wavelength coverage of of UVA that reaches the Earth uh, surface. So I think that's really important to keep in mind when you're using like the Pyongyang Yule, for instance, or the La Roche-Posay, what is it, the Enthelio sunscreen that's only titanium dioxide. Keep in mind that it's not gonna provide you the, the, the combination of coverage that, or the full, the full range of coverage that you would get with a combination of zinc oxide with titanium dioxide. So just keep that in mind. That being said, I think that a titanium dioxide only sunscreen, again, is great if you're just like indoors all day, maybe in a windowless room like that, and you're just sort of getting intermittent, little bit of sunshine through the windows occasionally. I think you're, I think you'll be fine, but um, just keep that in mind, especially if you're going to be outdoors for a long period of time. But that being said, it also has titanium dioxide in it. It has Uvenol T150, the Uvenol uh, S, or the Tenosorb S, it also has Uvenol A+, and this is a also phenomenal UVA-specific filter. Keep in mind that I believe that Uvenol A+, the absorption maximum is 354 nanometers. UVA goes between 315 to, I think, up to 400 nanometers. So the maximum is 354. That being said, with a combination of the, tit the titanium dioxide, the Uvenol uh, T150, as well as the Tensorb S, I think you're going to get just absolutely phenomenal coverage against UVA and UVA1, UVA2, as well as UVB. Alrighty, before I actually put this on my skin, I kind of wanted to just do a quick deep dive into the other ingredients that I think are worth mentioning. I have them pulled up so I can actually make sure that I'm reading them and doing my, my due diligence so that you can know really what's in this sunscreen, what I really like about it. I'm not sure if the original formulation had these other, these other ingredients in here, but I definitely do like them. And I think that they are, they weren't mentioned because they, I think potentially go a long way in terms of anti-aging. So, so the first ingredient is butyloctyl salicylate. I probably didn't say that correctly, even though I took two forms of organic chemistry. Uh, yeah, I probably didn't say that correctly, but that is the second ingredient 
outside or second ingredient to water. Water is the first ingredient. This ingredient may increase the SPF rating to a certain extent. It also helps to solubil solubilize and stabilize some UV filters, which I think is excellent because, uh, you know, sunscreen filters, especially the ones we have in the US, they're not extremely stable against UV and especially avabenzone. That's the really only UVA filter that we have approved in the US. Avabenzone really isn't highly stable unless a company finds ways in the lab to stabilize it. So having this ingredient in here I think can be really helpful because I'm really not sure about the stability of these Korean sunscreen filters like Uvinol T150, Tenosorb S. My understanding is that it actually is quite stable in comparison with uh, avabenzone. So, but having that ingredient to help kind of stabilize it I think is really really helpful and promising. There's also other emollient alcohol, silicones, um, humectant ingredients. So it's a great moisturizer, fantastic daily moisturizer in my opinion, because of those ingredients. And just like the original formulation, this also has Centella Asiatica extract in here. This is a botanical extract that has anti-inflammatory as well as anti-glycation properties. So anti-inflammatory, one of the hallmarks of the aging process, at least in the skin, is obviously the degradation of collagen and elastin due to UV-induced metamotalloproteinase activation or en enzymatic activation that degrades those proteins in the skin uh, because of UV pollutants, as well as just sort of the intrinsic aspects. Even our diet, for instance, can play a role to, you know, somewhat, not as much as the sun, obviously, but there's a lot of factors that, that play a role in that inflammation in the skin. Having that anti-inflammatory properties may potentially be helpful for the skin in terms of having an imparting an anti-aging benefit. But Centella Asiatica extract also has anti-glycation properties. So glycation occurs when glucose and basically when glucose and sugars, other sugars in the body bind to proteins like collagen and it can also bind to lipids in the skin as well. This can, this whole process, the glycation process can be amplified with UV exposure and can lead to less collagen and elastin in the skin because again these are proteins, large proteins in the skin and also your diet. So like fried foods for instance can also be associated with that glycation in the body. Sugar, the consumption of sugar can be associated with the glycation in the body and may impart sort of or really play a role in the aging process. So it's definitely to keep in mind not only those ingredients that you put on your skin, but the ingredients you put in your skin, fried foods, fried carbohydrate foods, you know, anything that has a breading, for instance, as well as sugar, um, the intake of sugar, making sure that you're, you know, having a holistic approach to an anti-aging regimen is really important. But yeah, um, animal studies show that Centella Asiatica extract can easily penetrate the skin, um, which is very, very important to, to know, especially because these have really potent or at least potentially, I always say that word, but like possibly really powerful, potent properties that can be, that can play a role in sort of the anti-aging, anti-aging goals that you're trying to achieve. In addition to Centella, Centella Asiatica extract as a whole, it also contains certain triterpenes or compounds derived from Centella Asiatica extract that also have similar anti-inflammatory, anti anti-aging properties. So I think the first one is let me see if I can say this correctly. Made casticide. So this is a triterpene isolated from uh, the Centella asiatica. This this possesses anti-inflammatory uh, properties as well. And made casticide may also. There's some studies showing that it may help to inhibit melanin synthesis in the skin caused by UV. So to in, in, in other words, possibly help to reduce the risk of hyper, hyperpigmentation. So sunscreen in itself can help to reduce hyperpigmentation, um, especially tinted sunscreens that have that blue light protection. But the, the triterpene, the isolated compound from Centella Asiatica extract may help to, may help to boost that protection against the melanin, the UV induced melanin synthesis. Asiatica side, Asiatica side, is that how you say it? Um, that's another active component and triterpene from Centella that has some roles in wound repair, but it also may help to protect against UV induced hyperpigmentation. And there's some studies showing that Asiatica side, Asiatica side, I'm probably not saying that correctly, um, may also help improve collagen one synthesis in the skin. That's pretty cool. And Asia Asiatic extract, um, also from Centella, can block UVA-induced activation of MMP2. These are metamotalloproteinases, enzymes in the skin, like I mentioned earlier, and like I mentioned in my other 
ingredients. Uh, these enzymes break down collagen and elastin. They contribute to the to the uh, the aging process within the skin. Uh, and those are induced by UVA, by the sun, but also, but also uh, the Asiatic, Asiatic acid sorry, can, may help block UVA-induced reactive oxygen species generation. So these are basically oxidation or free radicals in the skin that also contribute to the aging process um, and help to ultimately or consequentially help to inhibit lipid peroxidation, which can also play a role in improving the the skin texture and tone and play a role in sort of the anti-aging aspect. And the final triterpene from Centella Asiatica extract is the made cassic acid. Um, this has pretty much the same benefits as the other triterpenes. So really promising stuff. This is why I really like Oh, sorry. Um, this is why I really like the uh, the Purito sunscreen because it has these Centella Asiatica Asiatica extracts and the isolated triterpenes compounds from that extract that play a strong role in protecting against the sun. Not only the SPF, but also those ingredients may potentially play a role in protecting against all of those negative consequences from sun exposure. Okay, so we are really deep diving into this sunscreen, but why don't I go ahead and, after I get done sweating, why don't I go ahead and apply the sunscreen onto my skin? So just full disclosure, I am wearing the Kanmake, is that how you say it? Mermaid UV Gel Clear Sunscreen. So I don't believe, there might be a little bit of titanium dioxide in there, but I don't believe it has really a significant white cast. So I'm putting this basically on a clear skin. There's no tinted mineral sunscreen on my skin. So that's just full disclosure, but I wanted to put this on my skin just to see if there was any difference from the original formulation. The original formulation, let me see if I can get some out from this bottle. Here is the original formula. It's just, you know, your basic white sunscreen. It's not even showing up, but let me just go ahead and put this on the side of my skin so I can sort of feel the difference. It definitely is very, very light. And I don't really think it imparts a huge, what do you think? Does it really impart a huge white cast? I don't think so. I don't even think, cause I don't think it had titanium dioxide. I think it only had chemical, like two of those chemical filters. Yeah, it's very light. I think it was marketed as a um, watery sunscreen. And I, I really liked it. The smell has kind of dissipated over time. I don't know, maybe that means the efficacy is also dissipated. But yeah, it's it definitely is very moisturizing. I liked it as just a daily moisturizer. Perfect, perfect moisturizer with some SPF, not as much as was on the label, obviously. This one I've heard is a little bit thicker because it has more chemical filters. Yeah, it is a little bit more thicker. So here it is. Again, this is just a white sunscreen, you know, Again, this is just a white sunscreen. I am doing the two finger method. It feels a little bit thicker, but honestly, it doesn't feel that bad. So let me just put it on my whole face. It feels still a little watery. Very light and moisturizing. I think um, BS Beauty did a UV, or no BS Beauty did a UV test, camera test. And it showed that it really provided, at least in my opinion, provided good coverage on her face. Um, she said it was thicker and not as light, and she was kind of, it seemed like she was kind of unsure about it. I personally don't mind. It's not extremely different. Like, it may be statistically different, I don't know, significantly different, but for me, I don't feel like it's that significant. I still feel like it's very very moisturizing, very light, at least compared to like a pure mineral sunscreen. And I don't think it leaves a significant white cast. I don't know, maybe it does. I, I look pretty pale, right? <laughs> at least on my face. So just initial thoughts is that I do think it's light, but I'm gonna go ahead and let this sort of sit for 15 minutes and I'm gonna come back and see if anything has changed. Okay, so it is 15 minutes. Um, you can see kind of what it looks like. I think it's sort of calm down a little bit, at least in terms of the white cast. You can definitely, at least I don't really notice the white cast, again, significantly elevated in comparison with the original formula, even though it does have titanium dioxide in this. But yeah, this is 15 minutes post application. I definitely look shiny because, oh, I have walnuts in the oven. 
Um, yeah, I definitely look shiny because not only do I have the Kanmake sunscreen, but also on top I have the Purito sunscreen, so I have this emollient sheen to my skin right now. But I, I'm unsure, that being said, I'm unsure, you know, how shiny this will look it, with just, you know, naked skin. I'll do sort of a another review of this later on after I've used a lot of the sunscreen over time in different different environments, different atmospheres, um, different humidity levels. I'll definitely do a um, sort of a post six month review after I've used this sunscreen. But yeah, I personally like the sheen. I like the moist, wet look. Sorry if you hate that word, but yeah, I think it just looks good. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so basically my review is I love the sunscreen. I love the ingredients. I love the feel. I love the texture. I love the packaging. I love the look and sort of how comfortable it is and still breathable. It's not like a thick paste on my skin, which I adore. Yeah, so I'm just looking at myself through the viewfinder. I think that, I don't know. I, it looks good, at least in the small screen that I can see, right? I highly suggest picking it up. I found this on Stylevana. I'll leave a link down below. You can use my coupon code, which I will put here on the screen. That should give you a certain percentage off of your order. Let me know if you used it and let me know if it works or doesn't work in the comments down below. But yeah, I'm interested to know your opinion. Have you used the new formula? Do you like it? Let's see if we can sort of compare contrast notes because I really want to know um, how it works on different skin types, different skin tones and, and textures and etc. etc. So yeah, definitely let me know down below in the comments section. Okay, I'm gonna go attend to my walnuts so that they won't burn, but I hope you like this video. Uh, if you did like it, leave me a like button down below or hit the like button down below. It really helps me to grow my channel. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching this video. Thanks for sticking around to the end. Again, let me know your thoughts, your comments, your questions, even unrelated to the sunscreen if you like about skincare. Let me know down below in the, in the comment section. I'd love to have a conversation with you. If you're not already, please hit the subscribe button as well. I'd love to have you here as a member of the skincare research community. I think that we can all learn from each other and grow in our respective regimen. So definitely hit that subscribe button, join me. But thank you again for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.